Correct. Call the meeting to order. Good evening. My name is John Samia, and I'm the chair of the Shrewsbury Board of Selectmen. On behalf of my fellow board members and the town manager's office, I want to welcome you to our July 13th, 2021 Board of Selectmen meeting. Tonight's live broadcast is brought to you by Shrewsbury Media Connection, Mark Serra uh, of the SMC. In addition to tonight's live broadcast on channels 30, 330, and Facebook, tonight's meeting will be rebroadcast on channels 30, 330 um, from tomorrow until our next regularly scheduled meeting on July 27th, 2021. Tonight's meeting will also be available on YouTube for your viewing pleasure. So let's go to the preliminary items on the agenda. First item on the agenda is to approve bills, payrolls, and warrants. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, having been moved and seconded, uh, any discussion, any comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is to approve minutes of the June 22nd, 2021 and June 29th, 2021 meetings. Do I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Have been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is announcements, reports, colleagues, any announcements at all? I just have two. They relate to vacancies. We have a vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the Board of Selectmen is seeking one qualified individual interested in serving on the ZBA to fill a vacant term set to expire on March 31st, 2022. The Zoning Board of Appeals usually meets on the last Monday of the month and, is, and on an as-needed basis depending on the caseload. Interested persons must be registered voters of the town and are asked to submit a letter of interest and resume via email or mail to John Samia, Chair of the Board of Selectmen, 100 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass., or to Justin Dobson, J. Dobson, at shrewsburymat.gov by 4.30 p.m. on Monday, July 19, 2021. And then there's a second vacancy as well. Um, it was posted on July 6th. It says the town manager is seeking interest for Affordable Housing Board of Trustees. Uh, town and manager is seeking three qualified individuals interested in serving on the Affordable Housing Board of Trustees. Um, the Affordable Housing Board of Trustees established under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 44, Section 55C consists of five members. One member shall be a designee from the board. One member shall be the town manager or assistant town manager, and three members shall be residents of the town of Shrewsbury. So uh, if you're a resident of town of Shrewsbury and are interested, you're asked to submit a letter of interest and resume by mail to Kevin Mizikar, town manager, 100 Maple Avenue, Shrewsbury, Mass, 01545, or by email to jdobson at shrewsburymass.gov by no later than 4.30 p.m. on July 2021. So you do not need to be a registered voter on this you just need to be a resident so hopefully we'll get some interest in those positions um this the uh, affordable housing trust was approved at the may 22nd town meeting uh that's what i have for announcements if there's nothing else we'll move on to the town manager's report mr mizikar thank you good evening board members um a few items to update you on first and foremost this evening uh we'll start with the uh, COVID 19 report uh, from your last meeting uh, the town remains designated as a gray community um, which is the lowest category i know the state has walked away from their color-coded system but that was the last report um, there's been seven additional positive cases uh, in the community since your last meeting uh, on June 22nd, bringing the total to 2,976 uh, since uh, the uh, beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020. Uh, with regards to vaccinations, uh, through July 9th, 65% um, of the total uh, Shrewsbury residents uh, are fully vaccinated and 71% uh, are at least partially vaccinated. Um, so uh, good news on the vaccinations and our uh, daily case counts remain still very low um, in comparison to uh, the peaks that we saw this winter. Um, a couple additional up updates for the board outside of COVID-19. Um, based upon the 2020 census data, um, the town will be uh, adding an additional uh, voter precinct. Uh, we'll be moving from 10 precincts to 11 precincts. Um, town staff is working with the Secretary of State's office uh, with our GIS uh, team and planning team to develop uh, those equal uh, census tracts, uh, equal number of voters. 
and uh, we'll be bringing a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen uh, in October for your consideration, um, which uh, will take your signature to send it up to the state. Um, additionally, I wanted to update the board that uh, since our application in the middle of June, we've received $2,016,000 from the state from the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Uh, board members will recall we're anticipating receiving a total of $11.5 million and originally anticipated that our first allotment of funding would be a five and three quarter million. However, we've only received a portion of those funds. Uh, the funds are broken up into uh, the direct funding from the federal government to the town and then the portion that we anticipated receiving um, since Worcester County is not a functioning government entity. Uh, we have not received any of the latter funds. Uh, requested assistance uh, from Representative Kane to try to determine when those additional funds were going to be released. Um, it's a challenge uh, to bring uh, prioritization and plan requests to the board whenever we don't have certainty over uh, the total amount of funding we're going to receive. Um, this is kind of the conversation that we we're having throughout the spring months is, yes, you know, we have on good terms how much money we're going to get, but now we sit here on July 13th still with only $2 million and um, struggling to um, be able to put a plan in place, not uh, having what we originally anticipated. So I will keep you posted on when we may receive those additional funds and then continue forward with our plan to have the Board of Selectmen prioritize various buckets and, and approaches for the use of those funds in accordance with the federal regulations. Uh, and then finally, I'm just happy to report that we received a grant through the state's uh, shared streets program. Application went in through the Planning and Economic Development Department. The fu total funding is $48,926.90, which will be applied uh, towards the town's wayfinding um, project for the town center. And uh, we'll be bringing uh, locations and uh, uh, additional documents to the board prior to implementing those plans. So that's the end of my report for this and evening. Thank you, Mr. Mizakar. Any questions or comments for the town manager? No? Okay. We'll go under uh, next item on the agenda under new business. It's item agenda number five, review and act on order of takings for Route 20 land takings. Board members, as you remember, at our town meeting, a uh, town meeting on May 22nd, 2021, a town meeting approved Article 39, where the Board of Selectmen with, were authorized to acquire by gift, purchase or taking by eminent domain, the fee interest, permanent easements, temporary easements, or any other interest in land as may be deemed necessary to complete the improvements to Hartford Turnpike Route 20, as shown in a plan entitled Hartford Turnpike Route 20 in the town of Shrewsbury PSE and PSE design plans, sheets one through 60, dated March 3rd, 2021. Um, this order of takings is in furtherance of that um, authority conferred by town meeting onto the board. Um, the only question, so in, in our drive, there's also been there was an initial draft order of taking, and since then it's been further revised to provide additional book and, or additional information of the various takings or temporary, I guess, taking versus um, easements and the like that are uh, throughout this order of takings. One question I have for you, uh, Mr. Mizakar, that in addition to the order of takings, is there any action required with any payments, or is it just um, a, a approval of the order of taking? Because I. So that's just one question before we take it to any questions. So along with uh, the filing of the order of takings, uh, the town will mail um, the appropriate appraised value uh, or checks uh, equivalent to the appraised value uh, of the properties that we're taking that were not received through gift. Mm -hmm. um, that in total is a little over 30,000. It's, it's detailed within your documents, but no other specific action related to that is required. Uh, we will handle that with the filing. So by approving the order of Correct. takings under section six that has the award of damages, then everything's covered. Okay. Any questions or comments? Not I'll entertain in a motion um, regarding the order of takings. Mr. Chairman, I move the board approve and sign the necessary documents for the orders or order of takings for Route 20 land takings. Second. Any questions or comments? There being none. Uh, having been moved and seconded, and all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda relates to 
Review and act on Massachusetts Department of Public Health, Public Health Excellence Grant Program for Shared Services Letter of Commitment. Um, the City of Worcester was awarded funding through the Mass Department of Public Health Excellence Grant in the amount of $245,160 per year for three years for a public health district cost analysis business model for CMRPHA. It has been over 11 years now that Worcester has provided public health services to the surrounding areas through intermunicipal agreements like in Shrewsbury. Um, as through an email that we saw with this, and then I'll get to why we have this in front of us, it says that we welcome this opportunity to hire a consultant to work with the Alliance. Expected outcomes include a cost analysis and long-term business model to support sustainability and capacity to maintain and expand public health services, programs, initiatives, and policies. And then in turn, as part of this, um, the Mass Department of Public Health is requiring each community to provide a letter of commitment by July 31st, and that is what is in front of us for approval. Are there any questions? Not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move the board uh, approve and sign necessary documents relative to the Public Health Excellence Grant Program for Shared Services. Second. Um, having been moved and seconded, all those, signif all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is to review and act on Edgemere Crossing Community Support Document. I'll turn that over to you, Mr. Mezzacar, if you could give a brief explanation. Absolutely. So um, in accordance with uh, the town's uh, zoning bylaws uh, requiring of affordable homes to be constructed um, in multifamily developments, um, this um, puts into place the uh, town's uh, community support document signed by the Board of Selectmen, uh, which is a requirement of the uh, DHCD process um, supporting the developer's initiative to declare 25 uh, units within the 250 unit development uh, to be affordable and they'll receive technical assistance uh, in uh, throughout the process and um, have those 25 called local action units designated as affordable um, for low and moderate income individuals any questions or comments if there are none I'll entertain a motion mr. chairman I move the board um, approve the Edgemere Crossing Regulatory Agreement. Is that correct? Yeah. There's a second. Second. Having moved and seconded, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda under item eight, review and act on extension of outdoor dining licenses. Um, just to provide a little background, um, we've received a board brief. It informs the board um, and also the community, um, section 24, 75 Chapter 70, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency relative to provisions to extend temporary outdoor dining licenses of restaurant establishments until April 1st, 2022. Um, on September 10th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an order making certain phase three adjustments, which extended the period for outdoor table service by licensees license for on-premises consumption up to and in, until 60 days after the date of the end of the state of emergency. The expiration date under this order is August 15th, 2021. On June 16th, 2021, Governor Baker signed an extension of the COVID-19 measures, section 2475, extending certain measures adopted during the state of emergency. Um, one of these it relates to um, under chapter 20, section B, the local licensing authority may approve a request for expansion of outdoor table service or an extension of an earlier granted approval under COVID-19 order number 50 from the effective date of the act until April 1st, 2022. So what we're being doing here, although we don't have for these individuals, um, licenses were given to them before to have outdoor alcohol consumption, that we're taking the approach of unilaterally extending, correct? So all, that's what we're doing all, here? All table service. All table service, yes. okay. Yes. The only one question I have, and then I'll open up to any other questions, is that the original, say, COVID safety plans required six feet between all the tables. Will that change at all as part of this, or is that just fluid as part of this process? Yes, this, this just continues the ability for them to uh, conduct outdoor dining, so okay. other limitations have been lifted. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments? I'm just one. Yeah, Mrs. Cassidy. Um, what is the path forward if any of these restaurants decides they'd like to try to make outdoor dining permanent rather than just a temporary? 
It would be uh, through the local zoning process, so we'd have to consider those changes to our zoning bylaw to allow this. So this that's really uh, my belief and the intention of the governor and, and the legislature is to give communities that opportunity to continue the dining now throughout uh, the warm weather months and have time to make those decisions for next uh, spring if we so choose. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain an, an a motion for this. Mr. Chairman, I move the board uh, extend outdoor dining licenses uh, pursuant to uh, pursuant to Mass General Law for Hooters, 378 Maple Ave, Lakeside Bar and Grill, 97 Boston Turnpike, Jimmy's Tavern, 50 Boston Turnpike, Burton's Grill, 193 Boston Turnpike, Bollywood Grill, 97 Boston Turnpike, and Amici's slash Willie's at 582 Main Street. Second. Have you moved and seconded um, all those uh, that approve the, the motion signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is to review and act on a renewal of the intermunicipal agreement of the Animal Control Animal Inspector Services. So we have an agreement um, between Westboro, Grafton, and Shrewsbury that is, has histor historically been for a year term. Last year on July 14th, we extended the term of the agreement um, from July 1st, 2020 to June 3rd, 2021. This relates to really overflow services for Shrewsbury to the other communities, whereas Westboro provides a significant amount of support to Grafton, if I recall correctly. What we're being asked today is to approve an amendment for a six-month extension of term, and all other terms remain the same. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. LeBeau. Uh, to the manager, six months? I find that curious. Yeah, um, we... The main concern, or there's some concerns between Westboro and Grafton uh, because they're the two most uh, integral um, as far as the exchange of funds and level services provided between those two communities, and they want to continue uh, the agreement. Grafton just has a new town administrator, and they, but they want to revise it, so they're not looking at to enter into the full year. Um, as the, uh, Mr. Sammy had mentioned, Shrewsbury just provides backup services through this intermunicipal agreement, so we're not really in those negotiations, so it's no harm for us for the six months, but we will be back uh, before January 1st uh, with a longer-term agreement. Terrific. Thank you. Three communities. Yep. Any other questions? Not. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I move the board uh, approve the renewal of the intermunicipal agreement of animal control, animal inspector services. Second. I've been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda under new business number 10, review and act to enter into second amendment agreement with mass development for the Beale site redevelopment. Um, so. In essence, but Mr. Mizikar, I'll ask you to add additional color to the extent I miss anything, is that this is additional support for up to $5,000 from Landwise LLC through mass development. And in essence, what we're allowing or seeking approval for is the payment of $5,000 to mass development to in turn pay for the professional services to Landwise LLC. And the services are outlined in the scope of work from the June 8th, uh, say, proposal letter um, from Landwise to Mass Development. So that's what we're being asked to approve, but we're actually being asked to approve through the Second Amendment to Memorandum of Agreement with Mass Development. Any questions? Not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move the board enter into the Second Amendment Agreement with Mass Development for Beale Site Redevelopment. Second. I've been moved and seconded. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is to review and act on the appointment of one member to the Historic District Commission for a three year term to expire June 30th, 2024. Um, this resulted from one vacancy where one existing member of the Historic District Commission elected not to proceed. And we have two candidates Whitney, I don't want to, Gadecki, Andrews, 11. Cranbrook Road and Jim Smith for Merriam Avenue. Um, any comments or questions? Uh, we have received materials, just so folks watching from home. Uh, we have received um, letters of interest, their credentials, uh, their professional experience were all presented to us. 
Um, what is the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Lebeau. Well, I mean, I, I, once again, two excellent candidates have, have submitted uh, letters of interest, which uh, makes our decision both, both difficult and easy, I mean, actually. Um, you know, honestly, my, um, my thinking when we're trying to uh, appoint people to a, a, a multi-body board um, with which we have uh, appointment authority over, you think about the individuals, but you think about the board. I mean, you think about, or at least I do, and I'm, I'm sure others do as well, you, you think about the totality of how the board is uh, um, going to interact, particularly with the public, but also amongst itself. Um, again, two excellent candidates um, have to favor one uh, tonight. Each one of us has to. Um, you know, considering that concept of uh, the totality of the board, um, I am in favor of uh, appointing uh, Whitney uh, Gadecki, if I pronounce that right, Andrews of Levin Cranbrook Road. I don't know if you'd like a motion at this time or you might want further discussion. Yeah, um, when we open up for further discussion, then we can figure out which way. Any further comments or questions or thoughts? Sure. Mrs. Gasman. Yep. Um, I'd just like to echo what my colleague Selectman LeBeau said. Um, I also think about the full board um, when I'm looking to appoint someone. I also take into consideration um, the letters that people send, their background, and in this case, both of the applicants are extremely well qualified for the role. Um, I try to look for diversity where I can, um, not just um, in gender and race, but also diversity of thought. Um, and, and again, looking at people who might be new to um, stepping into a role in municipal government by being part of a board or a committee. Uh, and I have seen um, Whitney Gadecki Andrews has definitely shown an interest in many other positions that have been posted over probably the past six months. Uh, they were not, she wasn't selected for any of those positions, but I do see this as being a good fit um, for her background and for, um, just reading through her letter, uh, not only her professional experience where she's a real estate agent in the community, but also just uh, something that she enjoys doing on a personal level, which is collecting antiques. And um, she was in the business of resale for antiques and just wanting to preserve and having that preservation background, I think is important for this role. Uh, so while it was a very difficult decision, I am also going to select Whitney Gadecki Andrews um, for this, this role. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Flint? So I agree with my colleagues that I think both candidates are, you know, we can't go wrong with either choice. Um, my personal vote is for Jim Smith, given his deep um, history um, and knowledge um, of, of Shrewsbury history and his contributions towards um, specific initiatives in the historical district. Okay, thank you. And, you know, I echo everything that's been said so far. I uh, did have an opportunity to speak with both candidates, uh, enjoyable conversations, talk through uh, different items with both about historic preservation, talked about the Beale property, talked about revitalization of the town center. Um, they both have a lot of experience with history, whether it's history or antiques, but both have an appreciation for that. Um, I think that both of their backgrounds work well um, with Mr. Smith living in this house for 50 years. Um, Mrs. Andrews being in town for a long period of time as well. Both have had active involvement in many areas of the community. And so as Mr. LeBeau said, we can't go wrong with either. Um, I'm leaning a little towards, and I am leaning towards, um, but it's hard, uh, towards Mrs. Andrews and the small edge that I give her relates right now to the commercial experience that I see that she brings to the table right now, given the revitalization. Um, both have a great view on history and preservation. Um, the real estate component, I think, will be helpful as we look at the town and integrating the flavor of the, say, historic village in the community, but also balancing it against moving the community forward. But it was a very hard decision. So um, 
No, I appreciate the time that both of them took to speak with all of us or, or present to all of us. Um, and uh, but I also uh, will go with Miss Andrews for this position. So I, at this point, I think we, we have a consensus. So to your original point, I think we could have a motion um, given what we have and entertain one if you could. Mr. Chairman, I move the board um, appoint to the Historic District Commission for a term to expire June 30th, 2024, Whitney Gadecki Andrews of 11 Cranbrook Road. Second. I have been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I can still vote. You can say no. Aye. You I can, I can aye. say no. Yes, but you can I made say a no. recommendation, but I'm not opposed to okay. the motion. Okay. So. Okay. So, for the record, do you want to? I'm fine either way. Unanimous? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Aye. Well, either way is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's good. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to go through it. I, you know, um, I hope that with the Affordable Housing Trust and Zoning Board of Appeals that um, we get the same. There's so many great people in our community and hope we get the same interest um, because we will take the time to look through and, and talk to you and, and go through your credentials and look beyond the four quarters of the document. So please... Um, if you're interested, please give it a shot. We'd love to hear from you. Next item on the agenda is to review and act on the reappointment of Robert Pine, 20 Montgomery Avenue, Worcester, Mass, 01604, to the Insurance Advisory Committee for a one-year term set to expire on June 30th, 2022. Any questions or comments? I know one question we've had in the past is from Worcester, but that's not a problem in this case, right? Yeah, Mr. Pine represents retirees on the Insurance Advisory Committee. Okay, great. Any questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, move to a reappoint Robert Pine, 20 Montgomery Ave, to the Insurance Advisory Committee for a one-year term to expire June 30th, 2022. Second. I haven't been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is to review an act to approve the warrant to police officer and or dog officer pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 153. I guess one procedural question in front of us, we have the form of warrant under the statute under Chapter 140, Section 153. Is there a requirement that I read all of this or it's just to take a motion to approve? The latter. Okay, well, that sounds good to me. So uh, if there are no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move the board approve and authorize the chair to sign uh, the warrant to police officer and or dock officer pursuant to MGL Chapter 140, Section 153. Second. I have been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item under new business is to review and act on the town manager's appointment of Charbel Sucker, 12 Parme Parmesan Drive to the Commission on Disabilities for a three-year term to expire on June 30, 2024, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 8J. I have a motion. Um, move approval. Second. I have been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is seeking a proclamation under policy 30. So to review and act on the proclamation request from Melissa Magnuson for TK Horton on behalf of Troop 227 Boy Scouts of America. There's a proclamation um, under item 15, uh, which is consistent with uh, policy 30, uh, recognizing uh, Mr. Horton being elevated to the exalted rank of Eagle and a couple other items. Any questions or comments? Mr. LeBeau. I'm all in favor of this. I'm just wondering if we want to amend the policy to, I mean, do we really need to, to have an action to approve a proclamation for a Boy Scout Eagles Code of Honor? Yeah, this was when we went to setting a process so we yeah the, no i agree i yeah. mean i think the process is great i just yeah. think we might bump into cases like this where i'm i'm not sure if it's really necessary i also had a comment yeah please um i'm wondering if uh we if we're going to amend the policy so that it doesn't include uh scout proclamations mm -hmm. that's makes what i'm going to say not relevant anymore mm -hmm. but i'm concerned because i don't think that our scout troops realize that the policy has been put into place and they're bumping up against it. And I want to make sure that we don't run into a situation where they aren't able to get their proclamations on time. So. I'd be fine taking it up at our next agenda, next meeting on the 27th to take up amending policy 30 to carve this out. It is 
a lot for what they're doing here. I mean, they're putting together recitals. We approve it under the policy. The rest of it makes sense, but I'm, I'd be fine amending the policy or proposing amendments at our next meeting. I'm also not really sure how it worked the old way and whether or not we need to consult with staff in the manager's office to make sure that this isn't making their lives easier to have the advance notice and also the um, the text of the proclamation coming to them from the this, this, um, troop leaders. So it's a couple of different points, I guess. Yeah, it's something we could learn. I mean, th th we could still require the timelines. It just doesn't require board approval. Action. Yeah, I mean, we still want to make sure when someone comes in, hey, that can be the proactive approach to uh, troops in town to tell, ask them that if they have proclamations for elevations or um, for these you know, Eagle Scouts or the like, it's a tremendous achievement for them, but I don't think they need to go through this. That being said, being mindful of resources that we have in town so we can do that, reach out to them, ask them X weeks before and do it that way, but pull it out from policy 30. I think it's something we could do, we can work together on from now to the 27th and bring it forward. Yeah, if I could, it just seems like all it would really need was um, a line in it that basically says that these type of routine recognitions don't require board approval. I think the intent of the policy was more along the lines of making sure we um, had something in place so that when we approve something like a, a day or mm -hmm. a week, um, or we were doing a proclamation, for example, on Juneteenth, mm -hmm. that we were setting not setting precedent in a way that was going to come back and make it more difficult for us in future years. But I think we might have made it more cumbersome <laughs> for things like Eagle Scouts, which is supposed to be something that's rare, but we have quite a few Eagle Scouts no. in Shrewsbury because we have exemplary scouts, I guess. Exemplary scouts and pent-up demand from yeah. a year and a half of right. not being able to have these mm -hmm. um, opportunities to recognize these fine um, young men. So why don't we over the next couple of weeks, we'll take it offline. I mean, of course, the challenge always is when you build an exception to a rule, does it somehow swallow the rule? So we just need to be careful how we do it. Would you like me to take a look, considering I drafted that policy in the first place, Fantastic. to see if I can amend it in a way that would make sense? It's all yours. Okay. Thank you. You don't want to fight around that? <laughs> in the parking lot after the meeting. Mm -hmm. All good. Okay, great. Um, so I will take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move the board uh, approve the proclamation request for Melissa Magnuson for T.K. Horton on behalf of Troop 227, Boy Scouts of America. Second. Have been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. We are in correspondence. So item 16, it's an email dated June 21st, 2021 from Chandra Rana of 6 Holando Drive regarding um, internet outage on Holando Drive on June 20th, 2021. So noted. Next item uh, under correspondence, email dated June 21st, 2021 from Hannah Kane regarding the American Jobs Plan update. So noted. Next item is email dated June 23rd, 2021 from Anna Darrow, the office of Hannah Kane, re, uh, regarding the Chapter 90 bond bill. Uh, the bill would provide $989,636 in road and bridge funding for fiscal year 2022 under the state's Chapter 90 program, um, which I assume was subsequently approved. Is, is, Mr. Mizikar, has that been that number hard? on the 989,636 under chapter I don't know 90. if it's been signed into law yet or not. Okay. But that's the number we've carried throughout the budget process. Okay, thank you. So noted. Next is email dated June 24, 2021 from John McCourty, 25 Thomas Farm Circle regarding Centec North. And it was a question regarding the traffic pattern for Centec North and whether um, there will be similar uh, approaches to the no left turn on South Street that we recently passed. So noted. Next item is email dated from Stan Tronziak, 562 South Street, regarding the South Street left only turn. Um, he had a question regarding our June 8th meeting and the action that we took, and he was asking about notice and uh, whether those uh, in that area were contacted. That's something that's where we can look at going forward in terms of communication as we're looking at chapter, uh, excuse me, Route 20 going forward. If there are any subsequent changes, that's something we can look into to make sure that. Um, if there were, we try to get as broad of a scope as possible and, and reaching out, but there may be other ways that we need to do going forward to make sure that folks here uh, so noted. Uh, next item is letter dated June 25th from Preston Carp regarding a scholarship, uh, 
scholarship thank you card, the 2021 Town of Shrewsbury Scholarship. We wish him well as he starts this fall at the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. So noted. Next item is an email dated June 28th, 2021 from Suzanne Shaw, 30 Main Boulevard, regarding request for speed monitor on Washington Street. Mr. Mizikar, we did respond to her. I just want to make sure that she is on the list. Okay. Yes. And the other thing, something we consider as we talk about traffic going forward, just monitors in general and how many we have and if we want to look at getting more. But that's a question we can bring up when we talk about traffic, which will be, we'll have to set that date. So noted. Next item is email dated June 28, 2021 from Ruth Febo regarding uh, Q2 status update from the Shrewsbury Diversity, Equity and Inclusion um, Task Force. That was a very thorough update on the, the second status from the DEI task force and the various subcommittees there. Mrs. Casavan, do you want to add any additional call um, on that? The task force met last night um, to talk about the format for the final report. Uh, it's certainly a challenge because there's so much information that needs to be conveyed, but we also want to make sure that the report is readable in length. Um, and so talking about, that's pretty much what we're talking about, is how we're going to convey the points that we want to make um, as a group in a way that um, isn't overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And there's just probably a lot of work that I think would be ongoing um, even after the task force wraps itself up within the report and recommendations for ways that the town can further uh, incorporate DEI into its operations. So. I'm really, really excited about the work that's been done. I think all of the subcommittees, or seven of them now, have done an outstanding job of um, coming up with their recommendations and doing their research. And I would like to just take an opportunity to encourage people that are listening. There's a survey that was put together by the task force. It's very short. Um, there are paper copies available in various locations throughout town. I know at the library there are some. Um, and then it's also available online by going to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force, um, I believe on the web page, the town web page, that can be accessed as well. Um, so more people that participate, the better picture we have of you know, what, what we are like as a community as far as uh, DEI and how we treat people um, who aren't necessarily um, in the majority, how we treat minorities, how we treat people with disabilities, people of different sexual orientations. It, it runs the gamut on that um, survey. So it would be great if more people participated in it. Okay, great. Thank you. The other thing, too, reading through the subcommittee reports, will be interesting how they weave it all together because you can tell they're distinct subcommittees and how they were looking at the various issues, and some even seem more say bulleted and then some had problem statements and some had so be uh, interesting is well everyone's marching towards a common goal looking at various issues and there's consistency there's also a lot of differences which um, in terms of style so it'll be interesting how that's right and that together. was why we literally spent an hour and a half last night trying to iron out what we wanted the report to look like mm -hmm. and then um also knowing that there might be overlap within some of the subcommittees as to recommendations for the town and whether we want the overlap to be there because it further emphasizes the need for whatever the recommendation is or if we want to take the overlap out. Um, and then also the group recognizes that just because something is a priority recommendation from the task force, it may not be feasible to be a priority recommendation for the town because there might be funding attached to it or it might just take longer to implement and there might be other things that can be implemented more quickly or with greater ease that maybe aren't as high of a priority. So do we even want to prioritize or just present a list of recommendations? So there's been quite a bit of conversation around this and then the task force also decided that we're going to stay remote for the next meeting which is in August but then following that we will be meeting in person because we don't think that we can um, in a remote setting really come up with a report that reflects um, basically the needs of each subcommittee and getting it getting it right mm -hmm. it's really difficult to do virtually so we'll see how that goes having those meetings in person yeah, when we did the fiscal study committee in 2013 and had the various subcommittees, the, it was invaluable to be able, once you got to the point of uh, a report or a draft report to be in person to Wordsmith to go over to have agreements and disagreements and then working through those to make sure that you're getting the points across in a clear, concise way too, so you don't get lost in the details. So that'll be a, uh, we look forward to that report. So thank you. Yeah. 
Um, next item is email dated June 29, 2021 from David and Cynthia Kelly, 71 Janet Circle, and it's regarding um, number two Janet Circle and just questions under the Dover Amendment and that property. So noted. Next item is letter dated June 30th, 21, 2021 from Alan Gao, 14 Point Road, Unit 1, regarding the 2021 Town of Shrewsbury Scholarship. We wish him well at Northeastern this fall, so thank you for sending that thank you note, so noted. Next item is a letter dated July 1st, 2021 from Mr. Mizikar, um, regarding uh, appointing Ms. Loss as acting town manager while he was out for a couple days, so noted. Uh, letter dated July 1st, 2021 from Central Mass Regional Planning Committee regarding fiscal 2022 assessment. Um, it's our portion of costs and expenses for the Central Mass Regional Planning Committee, or Commission, excuse me, for the, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 21 and ending June 30th, 2022. And our assessment's $10,713.38, so noted. Next item is an email dated July 12th, 2021 from Paul George regarding uh, zoning board. He resigned from the Zoning Board of Appeals. I just want to thank Mr. George for his outstanding service to the community. Um, it would be very hard to replace. Um, that's the, the vacancy that we talked about earlier, but we just wanted to thank him for his service and wish him well. So noted. Next item is an email dated July 7th, 2021 from Robert Ryan, 8 Colonial Drive. Um, regarding an Eagle Scout or uh, Circle of Honor, which will be held on Thursday, August 19th, 2021, so noted. Next item is email dated July 7th, 2021 from Chief Bona from Shrewsbury Fire Department, um, forwarding a message from the Mass Fire Sprinkler Association, so noted. Um, next 31, letter dated July 1st, 2021, we received July 8th, 2021, from Melissa Magnuson to Robertson Drive, Reason Boy Scouts of America to Troop 227, so noted. Uh, next is an email dated July 8th from David Snowden, Department of Public Works Business Manager, regarding household hazardous waste, an update, so noted. And the last item of correspondence, an email dated July 8th from Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission, the assessment that I just talked about a few items ago and the invoice, I think, that was attached to it. If there are no other items that any members would like to discuss, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I've been moved and second, and a roll call vote is required. Mr. LeBeau. Aye. Oh, really? Keeping us on our time. I missed that. And Mrs. Cassavan. Aye. Mrs. Flynn. Aye. Mr. Samia. Aye. And it's been passed and we are adjourned. Thank you. Have a good night.